This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the first episode of Behind the Pen. I am your host, Mike Rankin, and wow, I am excited because this is my very own show and I could talk about whatever I want. And first, before I get into all the stuff that I have on tap for tonight, I'd like to give a nice thank you to Ricky Widmeyer from MVP Podcast, from which this wonderful podcast will be presented by, as well as everybody on the team to make this happen. Without them, you wouldn't be able to hear my voice right now, so I want to say thank you. First, I want to I want to get into a lot of stuff tonight, but let me let me let me spread this out and say Cubs, White Sox, Bulls, Bears, and I say that because I am from Chicago, and as a Chicago guy, I am a Chicago sports fan. So what you can expect is a lot of Chicago sports talk from me. But I also want to say that just, here's a couple things that I would like to share with you but so you just get a little bit of my personality before this stuff gets really heated or discussed. I'm a huge Kirk Heinrich fan. Straight up, flat out, Kirk Heinrich is my favorite player in the NBA ever. And before we get into some Bulls talk, I just want to say what the hell was that when they traded him twice for basically nothing. They did it again this year. Unbelievable. But that's, you know, I'm not running the Bulls. You know, if I was running the Bulls, I'd be more loyal. But all right, well, we'll get more into that later. Number two, and probably the most important thing besides the, I wanted to mention the Kirk Heinrich thing because that's important. But the number two, for number two, I want to say the Chicago Cubs have been my life since 1998. And that's not saying, you know, I'm a, I'm a bigger fan than the, to this guy who's been a fan since 2010, whatever, you know. I'm happy to know you're a Cub fan. That's all. I'm just saying for a great portion of my life, for around 18 years, the Chicago Cubs have been it. I have been focusing a lot of my time, my energy, my attention span towards the Chicago Cubs. And you know what? There's a lot of suffering that's happened, but we're here and it's 2016 and the time is now. I'll get more into that later. But like I said, I'm very excited about this season coming forward. And the season's going, you know, past 2016. There's going to be a lot of stuff that suggests that, yes, this Cubs team is not going to be the lovable losers anymore. They're going to be the lovable winners, right? <laughs> right? Anyway, I, I like the Blackhawks, but I'm not going to say that I'm maybe a big-time fan of them. Only because I haven't really paid attention to the Blackhawks very much. Yeah, I'm I I am well aware of their three cups in six years, and I'm I'm very well aware of their their players, and and you know I pay attention to the Hawks. Don't get me wrong, but I would I'm a Cub fan, and I would rank the Chicago Blackhawks in terms of my fandom, the teams I pay attention to the most. I would rank them below the White Sox, only because I love baseball so much, and that brings me to my next point. I don't hate the White Sox. But at the same time, it gives me a chance to cuz listen, like how how often is it to have more than one team in a state that you can follow and I'm privileged to have two in my favorite sport. So that's that's another thing. So I'm going to talk some so tonight I'm going to talk some Cubs, some White Sox, some Bulls, some Bears, get right into Pretty much everything, anything I want to talk about because this is Behind the Pen, hosted by Mike Rankin, and I can talk about whatever I want. Now, throughout the show, I'm excited to bring on guests, have contributors, people calling in. Let's do it. Let's do the whole shebang here. But all right, first first topic I'd like to talk about is the Chicago Bulls because I just kind of want to get some frustration out right away. I was kind of buying in to whatever vision or plan Gar Foreman and John Paxson had for this team and for the coming years ahead. But 
I, I laid it all on the line when it came up to this year's deadline. This year's deadline presented a very good opportunity for the Chicago Bulls to go from mediocre, amateurish, kind of playing in the sand, kind of tiptoeing their way into the playoffs to, okay, we can build something for the future. Because let me tell you right now that this Bulls team, that the roster that they have right now, even with a healthy Butler, a healthy Taj, a healthy Gasol, and a healthy Rose, they can't win. They are not going to win. And you combine that with the players around them, and you have nothing. This is nothing. You fire your head coach of five, six years, whatever it was, of Thibodeau, who was obviously didn't agree with the front office in their terms of going about business because it's clear that they didn't have a functioning relationship. And you know what? With Thibodeau, I have to say that for a guy who's often compared as the Bill Belichick of basketball, for him to have a conflicting view of approach of construction construction of a team and how you run a team, that tells you something. That tells you that this front office isn't the right fit. I don't know what their problem is trying to dump guys for salary. Yes, I'm talking about Kirk Heinrich. What, and not add any significant value when they need it or when they have a chance to move forward. But anyway, the Thibodeau firing brought in Fred Hoiberg. And this isn't a surprise. It shouldn't have been for any Bulls fan who's been paying attention because Hoiberg was their guy going back since what, 2013, they were like, yep, as soon as Thibodeau's done, we got this guy. We got Hoiberg who's going to fill in. He's going to be great. He's got all these offensive schemes. He's not going to wear down our big men. He's going to be able to fill in rotations a lot better. And what happens? This dumpster fire. I don't understand what the front office was thinking at the deadline. And this, at that specific point, I turn my attention away from the Bulls into hate watching the Bulls. And this isn't fun hate watching the Bulls. I am totally sick and tired of the agenda of this team. Just look at their rotation. They started Cam Bearstyle the other day. Are you kidding me? Yeah, they didn't they didn't start Bobby Portis because they wanted to be their energy guy off the bench. But you have a regular rotation at one point. You trade for Justin Holiday. That's the compensation you get after you dump Kirk Heinrich, who is a one of the top, pro, I would I would consider him top fifteen, top twelve Bulls of all time. And there's there, you can debate whether or not, you know, he he's worse than whatever. But it's not true because if you look at the wrong Kirk Heinrich, besides the fact that he's the all time leader in threes, which is fantastic, he he is among the league leaders in or in the franchise leaders in minutes played, in in assists, and blah blah blah. He's up there. He's 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 been a bull for as long as since 2003 pretty much. And he spent his ent- and this is how the front office treats a player like him. Where's the loyalty? This isn't the first time that this front office has messed up and I could go on and bash plenty of things that they've done like of course the uh LaMarcus Aldridge trade for Tyrus Thomas which obviously was bad. But I saw a very interesting comment or whatever, fun fact, if you want to call it, about the Bulls. If you exclude Justin Holiday, the Bulls are the only team in the NBA who has never, who, who does not have a player on their roster uh, required from a trade. And that has been the case for several years. And as long as I, that has been a case, besides maybe Larry Hughes, Brad Miller, uh, John Salmons, those guys were like their greatest trade acquisitions. I'm not, I don't remember if John Salmons was a trade acquisition, but I, I, you get the point. They, they don't do anything besides rely on their drafting and try and lure free agents in, big time free agents in, and always come up short. And why is that? Oh, well, Gar Paxson says that they believe that they want to come here because they've made the playoffs in consecutive years. Really? You think you're going to lure in a top 10 player in the NBA 
because your team is among half of the Eastern Conference teams that make the playoffs every year. Are you kidding me? That's your reasoning? And they believe that they have a future. They actually want to re-sign Paul Gasol after this season. If I'm Paul Gasol, I'm cutting and running now, but he can't. And you think he's going to sign again? You're out of your minds. This Bulls team isn't going anywhere. And like I said, and I'll keep saying it, it was the trade deadline that they had a chance to move forward with this roster. And that would sacrifice this season, yes, given you know you had expectations to win a championship this year. But you look at what happened. They're 30-30 and 30 right now. They're a game out of the playoffs. They're in ninth. They're not even in the playoffs right now. And maybe they can sneak in. They'll probably make the playoffs. I would say that they make the playoffs with a healthy Butler because if they don't, then they're pathetic, straight up pathetic. You have four guys that can that can get you into the playoffs, and if you can't, then you're terrible. But that, regardless, you get a 6, 7, 8 seed and then get bounced in the first round of the playoffs. Congratulations. Now what? You have this... Roster filled with Cam Bearstow and Justin Holiday and Aaron Brooks, Etwan Moore. What? Who? 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 I don't understand where they're going to get. They, they can't score and they can't play defense. It's just so frustrating to me that this front office believes that they're championship caliber. And I think it's a reality check now that they messed up badly. And they messed up badly. They had a chance to move Powell and Tony Snell, who's trash, for a nice little deal with the Kings. And you could look it up, but it it didn't it fell through. And apparently, Gar Foreman said, "Yeah, no, we were never trading for Powell. We were never, uh, you know, he was never on the table." Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? How is Powell Gasol not expendable? How are you not trying to move him? You have to move him. That's how you get better. You get worse or you stand still if you do nothing. And what did they do? They cut Kirk Heinrich to free up cap space. And they're still below the luxury tax. I mean, I'm sorry, they're still above it. So that means they still they're still paying it. They would still they're being a penalty. What what are they doing? I don't understand. I really don't understand the direction of this Bulls team. I want Gar Foreman and John Paxson out. And another thing, yeah, it's unfair for Fred Hoiberg to come into this roster and kind of, you know, this isn't really his team. It's Thibodeau's team. It's still Thibodeau's team. But you had this idea that, yeah, this guy could come in, create offensive prowess for a team that's defensive-minded. And now I'm not even, I wouldn't even be surprised if I checked to see if the Bulls were in the bottom 10 rankings on defense. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. They're giving up 30 games this season or 15 something it's just an extraordinary amount of games compared to the previous Thibodeau tenure where they've given up 100 points in a contest it's happening way too often and go along going along with that they're giving up 30 points in a quarter every single day I don't get it you're not gonna win you're not gonna win if you don't play defense but I will say there's a couple positives that I like on this Bulls team a couple one is Doug McDermott. Doug McDermott's a nice, nice, he's picking it up. And I think the transition from Thibodeau has helped McDermott's game. And not only for his ability to shoot, but he's able to work around screen. Yeah, he's not going to be good defensively. It's obvious. He can't play defense. But if he had any support, it wouldn't look as bad. But yeah, he's, he's bad there. But he can drive. He's working uh, the pick and roll really well. He could, he could bounce off his man. He's got some quick speed. You know, he's a loser. He can get open. He can go down the lane and finish. You've seen him dunk once in a while. That's that's awesome. White man can dunk. That's great. It's great. You know? And another positive, would I would say, is Cristiano Felicio. At this point in the season, get him in. Play him some more. He doesn't have a post game yet. He really can't score much. But if you work with him with a pick and roll, he'll, he can do some stuff for you maybe. But what I like from him is he's he's big, 6'9". Like 250, 260, he's big, big boy. And he can work down low. He can get you rebounds, which the Bulls desperately need because they can't, they're always getting outscored in rebounds. So that's, that's, you know, he's 23. Let him play because might as well at this point. And then you have 
Bobby Portis. Free Bobby Portis. Well, he's freed. He's doing well. But he doesn't like to pass. He likes to shoot a lot, which is okay. Let him shoot. You can build around Bobby Portis, but you need more. And you're going to have another season of Derrick Rose and Jimmy Butler, who can't get along on the court. Jimmy Butler thinks he's this this elite talent who's on the same level as LeBron and Kevin Durant and all this other stuff. He's out of his mind. And Pau Gasol doesn't play any defense. This I just can't do this team anymore. I don't like the Bulls anymore. I'm honestly... Hey, I'm hey watching them and hoping that they they I don't I don't want to say that I hope they don't make the playoffs because that that would just go against my fandom <laughs> my Bulls fan opinion or whatever I don't know I don't know anymore is it good I don't know I can't decide if it, if they should just get a pick or they should try their luck and go for the playoffs this season it doesn't matter it doesn't matter they're not going to do anything with this front office running this team so 